This afternoon, I am going to be busy planting up all of my summer annuals. I received a shipment from Proven Winners a few days ago. I have been out visiting uh, some family in the Midwest and I just got back last night and I'm anxious to get a jump on some things. Unfortunately, with me being gone just a few days, my seedlings had uh, mostly, I had quite a few pairs. So we're gonna have to rethink that. But it's a beautiful day, a beautiful week ahead actually. I've got Abby, I'll show you. Oh, there she is. I've got Abby with me outside. Things really have perked up. I don't know if you can see, I'll show you in a second as well. The creeping phlox is in full bloom. All of the tulips have bloomed and I'll be excited to take out those dead mums and put in some of my summer annuals. Again, in my last few videos, I mentioned I left my fall annuals in place as a placeholder for me to just pop those out and pop in these summer annuals. I typically plant them about three feet apart from center. So one and a half feet and one and a half feet from the center. That way it creates kind of a nice hedge together, which I think will be very beautiful. Let me turn around the camera just so I can show you some things that I'm excited about that was not as prominent during my full garden tour. That was, I believe, last Saturday. The hostas that I planted that I got from my neighbor have really exploded. They look so beautiful. These must be a fire and ice hosta. They, they, they look pretty familiar. I think I have one over there. Here's the creeping phlox in full bloom. It looks so beautiful. And then the Empress Wu Hosta that I planted just sprung into action. Abby's with me. All of the daffodils are in bloom. I don't know how well you can see, but I have all of my summer annuals lined up, ready to plant. It's a beautiful day today. Today is Thursday, May 11th, and I'm just outside right now with Abby again, and I just recently picked up a few things from a local greenhouse, so I'll be planting those. I went in for potting soil and came out with a bunch of plants, which that's probably no surprise. I'm probably not alone in that. I finished planting all of my annuals yesterday, my fall, summer annuals in the beds along the driveway. Now I just have to pot up a few more things. I picked up some lavender to replace the lavender that had died this winter. I'll be planting some sunflower seeds and the black-eyed Susan vine that I had planted from two little seedling starts. Something came by and ate it. So it may have just be coincidence, but at the greenhouse I found a giant black-eyed Susan vine, the exact one that I was growing. And I'm hoping because it's more established that whatever ate my two seedlings will not eat this. So I still think the vision of having the black-eyed Susan vine over the pine tree branch over the greenhouse will still work. So I'll go around and start finishing up and tying up what I have and probably planting out a few seedlings. And then lastly, for tomorrow, I'll be prepping tonight, making a bunch of tulip bouquets. I still have some stored in my basement, which is cool and dark, and I think they'll still be fresh for tomorrow. And then maybe, maybe I'll have some fresh for even next week. Right now, looking at everything, the tulips outside are now completely fully open and are starting to fade a little bit, but everything else is starting to flush out with new growth. So very excited about that. Of the few things that I picked up from the greenhouse are some Brennera. Frostbite Heartleaf Brennera. I thought this would look really nicely. I'm not 100% sold on the layout here. I'm either going to keep them here or 
switch out some of the hostas under here and put in the brethra because I still have three hostas that I need to plant and I think I may swap so put some of these I think these may be called autumn frost hostas and switch them out over here so we'll, we're still going to see the empress Wu hosta which if you saw in my last vlog I think two vlogs ago it was just a little thing and now it's cranking away and then this one I just picked up today. What are you? She's beautiful, a beautiful bright chartreuse color. This is Plantain Lily Dancing Queen. It's absolutely gorgeous. I'm trying to play around with more color or different shades of green in the garden. And I think it just glows right now. It especially glows with this creeping phlox that is in full bloom. Let me just show you all of the annuals that I planted. I've got Abby out here with me. Daffodils, tulips. I gotta get to watering this side. I just fully watered the other side, the other picket fence. There's our Supertunia Bordeaux. White Knight Alyssum, and then Supertunia Jazzberry. And I know I said it yesterday, but it's just a repeating combination along the fence. And I have some lilies that I planted from bulb two years ago that did absolutely nothing last year. So I, I just thought maybe all the bulbs were duds. And then all of a sudden, they just started sprouting up. Foxglove is looking beautiful. Delphinium is peeking through the fence and I've got some Delphinium se uh, seedlings to plant today. Snapdragon. And a few lilies along this side of the fence over here too, not many. Something is also eating those. I just love how you can see that Dancing Queen hosta just glowing back there. So I think that was a good a good pick. And look how much this hydrangea tree is leafing out. Oh my goodness gracious. These are really beautiful. Look at these tulips. Absolutely stunning. Actually, look at that. That snapdragon is just starting to come up. Roses, I did a good job pruning these ones. I, I probably have a little bit more to prune on the roses, but the climbing ones in the side cottage garden still need to be pruned. Some more hostas and gladiolas popping through, believe it or not. That was a accident, but I'm sure it'll still look beautiful. And over here, I don't know how well you can see, but those are all the annuals planted alongside the tulips. And I did take out the old fall annuals, which were the mums. Look at this tulip. It's just so beautiful, pale yellow. I think I said it in an earlier vlog, but I don't expect for any of my foxgloves to have blooms because they bloomed last year and they are biannual, so probably next year. What I'm going to do now, I think my, what I'm thinking, my thought process, again, I think out loud. I think I'm going to be planting some sunspot sunflower seeds along the fence where they dip down because these sunflowers can grow 24 inches tall. They remain a little bit more compact than most sunflowers. So I thought that would be fun. And I do have to plant some of my seedlings. So I think I'll be planting some of my delphinium ones along with some amaranth 
and then if time allows I hope I can get to planting some of the plants I got today and also I have 25 more gladiolus still to plant the bulbs it's a busy afternoon these are the sunspot sunflowers that are dwarf they get about 18 to 24 inches tall so I think right in the middle of some of these fence posts I will be planting these sunflowers and I think they'll make for great cut flowers this year. I grew just a few last year, not many, but I have three packets of these along with some red sunflowers. So we have a whole bunch of sunflowers to be planting up. Abby's enjoying sunbathing. <laughs> Got my measuring tape, and since those sunflowers get only 18 to 24 inches, I just want to see. So there's 24 inches. So I think that'll still look really pretty and add some height here since we're not expecting for the foxgloves to bloom. I think it's still a good plan. <laughs> right, baby girl? All right, let's get planting some sunflower seeds. planting the sunflower seeds along the fences and now I just had a thought I've always wanted to start planting up this devil strip as they call it you can see it's pretty dead so I figured this fall I was gonna tackle digging up all of this and then huh, begin planting in some perennials and use it for annuals and cut flowers and whatnot but I just thought since I have all of these sunflowers, I might as well utilize this space right now and see if we can just grow also a nice long, I guess, hedge of many sunflowers. So it's worth a shot. I just finished planting up the black-eyed Susan vine, also known as Thumbergia, and I have it, I'm tying it off onto the branch, which I'll show you in a second. I feel optimistic about this one. I planted it and put in 
a slow release fertilizer because it is an annual and I do want to make sure that it performs pretty well. So I just used this Proven Winners Premium Continuous Release Plant Food, which is heat activated. So it's the same fertilizer I used for the Supertunias. So let's check it out. Just planted and I am tying it off with some twine. It's, I'd say about two feet tall at this point. And this vine, flowering vine, gets to be about six to eight feet in height. So I think it'll do a great job. It has this beautiful orange color. They come in a, de a variety of colors, but this is the one that I had originally planted. So hopefully a squirrel does not demolish this like it did my seedlings. Another plant that I had picked up today is actually this beautiful stone crop. It's a chartreuse color. It's called Sun Sparkler Angelina's Teacup. It's a sedum. I thought the stone crop or the sedum would play off really nicely with the cypress we have over there, the colors. Things will start to fill in a little bit more as these tulips fade and then their leaves start to die back and then I'll cut those down. So pretty soon this will really begin to fill up with lots of color and hopefully this flowering vine over the greenhouse. Here is my tip of the day for potting up flowers and plants in a container. A good way to make it easier is you simply Plop in your container into your container that you're hoping to pot it into and put the soil around it so you make a well while keeping it in its plastic bin or plastic container because now all you have to do, you'll see the well here. I already know the exact depth and everything that I need because we just filled in around the container or the pot. All I have to do is just pop out this lavender, pop it in and just top dress and that's it. So it makes it incredibly easier and faster when potting up your plants. So let's set you down and I'm going to replace the lavender that died this past winter with, so I'm going from Sweet Romance Lavender was last year. And then this year, I'm gonna be planting a Munstead Lavender. So you'll see it has pretty tall stems. I, there we go. You'll see it has pretty tall stems, which I am loving because I wanna do more lavender wands. I did one last year and I still have it. So I'd like to do some more and harvest some of the lavender. So all I have to do is just pop this out. Ooh, nice. And I gave it a good drink of water before I started the potting process. I'm just gonna massage the roots a little. Voila, it is now potted up. Just gonna put a little bit more on top. in that way I can reference the type of plant or the variety of plant I sometimes actually quite often forget okay and now all I need to do is simply water this in I could top dress it with some pea gravel which I might do it helps to retain moisture and also keep squirrels or animals out of the containers, prevents them from rooting around. So maybe we'll do that and then water it in. So that's my tip. 
next up is planting some of my dahlias. I have quite a few. Let me just set this down. Still pre-sprouting inside, which is good, but I have a few here outside that are ready to go. My idea is to save most of them for a couple of these raised beds to do a dahlia garden. So I'm thinking maybe I can fit three per four by four raised bed. I wanna give enough breathing room and just make sure that they're not too compacted together. So last year I did plant a few in some pots actually. Yes, two, and I had great success. So I think I'll do that with this one. And then I will be pinching the top back on, especially this one here soon. Pinching simply encourages the plant to begin branching out more, so that means more blooms if you snip off the leader. So we are gonna do that. I've already put some pot shards in the bottom of the containers to allow for better drainage. There, I'll show you. So I just save these if I have some pots that break over winter, and then I put them in the bottom of the container to just allow for a more successful drainage. Otherwise, sometimes the water can pool and sit and it just doesn't do as good a job as draining with something like this or with some rocks. This is what I'm talking about. So just putting these over the hole. That way the soil sits on top of this and the water can get through a little bit more readily or a little bit faster than had I not.
Okay, the last thing I just finished was pruning my climbing roses. These are James Galloway, David Austin climbing roses. They're more of a heritage or vintage rose, light, sweet fragrance, and it's in its third year now. The rule I follow when I prune my roses back are to follow the three Ds. So prune if it's diseased, dead, or dying. As well with roses, prune away any crossing branches. That way they're not rubbing against each other and potentially damaging the stems or the branches. I'm already starting to see some new growth flush out. I did put an extra application of rose tone and then watered it in. I do also fish emulsion, which I believe they like. So already pretty happy to see all of the new growth popping up. Whew, it's been a busy day planting and getting outside, which is really nice. So I'm gonna end the vlog here. Thank you so much for watching. Stay tuned for our next vlog, which will be coming out on Wednesday. Have a great weekend and happy Mother's Day. Bye.